And now the latest across the wide world of tropics. Proper weather bulletin for July the 23rd. Well, across the wide world of tropics on this day, we can see two tropical cyclones active in the western Pacific. Tropical depression Sampaka moving further south, expected to dissipate over the next few days. And Typhoon Infa expected to re-intensify to Category 2 intensity as it slowly moves northwest. On day 204 of the year so far, we've had 43 storms form in 2021. Let's move on to the Atlantic Basin where we have one of several areas of interest across the wide world of tropics today. On day 53 of hurricane season, a 30% area of interest moving off the southeast coast tonight. Uh, main impacts looking to be uh, ju uh, just disorganized showers and thunderstorm activity along the coastline, uh, but it does have a chance of forming into a tropical cyclone and that would add more impacts if it were to do so. In the Eastern Pacific on day 69 of hurricane season, you can see Invest 98E well out to sea, 30% chance on that one as it generally tracks northwestward. In the Western Pacific, TD uh, Sampaka moving further south, uh, Infa near the southern Japanese islands bringing significant impacts to those islands as a typhoon, and 90W tracking north, 40% on that one is what we're giving it. As we look at the satellite imagery across the world today, you can see in the Atlantic Basin the area of interest over the southeast producing a little bit of convection over South Carolina. Not much though. I believe this is uh, connected to a front that's diving further south and it's moving offshore. Uh, other than that, in the Atlantic Basin it's fairly quiet. As you can see in the Gulf of Mexico, Caribbean, and main development region, that's the Heron Air Layer. That's really keeping the thunderstorms suppressed in the uh, main development region, Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico. So other than uh, that little disturbance there, it's quiet in the Atlantic. In the Eastern Pacific, we're having to use a mix of uh, two satellites here, uh, GO-16 and Himawari-8. You can see Invest 98E um, well out to sea there, 30% chance. Um, that's going to generally be tracking northwestward towards some cooler waters, so it's got some limited time before it uh, runs out of time to form. In the western Pacific, you can see the main feature there, Typhoon Infa, near one of those Japanese islands. I'm not sure exactly what that island is, but either way, very significant impacts being brought to those islands. Uh, Sampaka overland. It's moving further south. It forecasts to dissipate fairly soon here. And 90W well out to sea, northeast of the northern Mariana Islands. And this could uh, come back into northern uh, Japan as an extratropical cyclone. And here's a close up of Typhoon Infa. You can see this is an infrared and water vapor mix. You can see the dry air within the eye. Um, and you can see the dryer off to its west. You can see the bulk of thunderstorm activity is on the eastern side of Infa. If it can wrap this thunderstorm activity uh, around its entire core, maybe then we could see some significant intensification, but I don't know if that's going to happen as that dry air is pretty potent and has been uh, putting uh, some damage onto this system for its whole life, really. The current forecast for Infa, you can see, intensifying uh, all the way up to n around 90 knots, that's around 105 miles per hour, and then weakening uh, on its way to China. Although the final path of Infa is fairly uncertain, so if you're in uh, Taiwan, Japan, China, um, even South Korea, I'd say, uh, be on a close watch of Infa as the track uh, is still a bit uncertain. The sea surface temperatures across the world tonight, you can see where 98E is, it's fairly warm, um, but as, as I said, as it tracks northwest, it's going to get into cooler sea surface temperatures, so it's on a timer, uh, really, until it, it loses its chance to really form. In the Atlantic Basin, where that disturbance is coming off, you can see it's very warm uh, over where that Gulf Stream is uh, off the southeast coast, so uh, the sea surface temperatures are not going to be an issue for that system. Elsewhere across the Atlantic, it's warming up uh, as you'd expect. In the northern Indian Ocean, Bay of Bengal, uh, warming up to the northern part. Um, in the Arabian Sea, it's actually cooling off in the central part of the Arabian Sea. And in the western Pacific, you can see where Infa is. Um, 
that cool pull to the northeast. I wonder if that is a, attributed to uh, by uh, Infa. But as you can see, under it right now, very warm sea surface temperatures, but due to it being such a large system, I wouldn't be surprised to see some upwelling take place fairly soon on that system. And where 90W is, and where it's tracking, piping hot, uh, ready for tropical cyclone formation. The sea surface temperature anomalies tonight, you can see the Atlantic Basin is generally above average, as has been the case. Um, we do have a little um, little bit of a below average area in the Central Caribbean, and some splotches of below average near Florida, but other than that, generally above average. In the Eastern Pacific, it's really the same story. Uh, towards Mexico, it's above average. As you head further out to sea towards Hawaii, you get to near and below average sea surface temperatures. In the Western Pacific, you can see that below average spot has been growing uh, as Infa has tracked along and uh, as it tracks further northwest it's got generally above average sea surface temperatures and across the majority of the western pacific it's above average and in the northern Indian Ocean it's mostly above average. On this day on July 23rd 2008 the main storm going on on this day was Hurricane Dolly moving into southern Texas. This was very similar to Hurricane Hannah of 2020, if you remember that one, moving into South Padre Island as a 100 mile per hour category 2 hurricane on July 23rd. It was also peaking on this day. We also had in the Atlantic Basin Tropical Storm Cristobal south of uh, Nova Scotia, tracking further northeast. In the Eastern Pacific, Fausto was a remnant low. Genevieve was a tropical storm heading out to sea, uh, not going to affect Mexico on that one. And we had extratropical Calmegi, I believe is how you say it. That was heading northeast uh, through northern Japan. Um, wouldn't uh, turn back into a tropical cyclone. So quite an active on this day in 2008. Um, so let's be thankful that we're not dealing with a hurricane making landfall. Um, but we do have a pretty significant typhoon to deal with right now. In the naming lists, could we see spread soon in the Atlantic? Let's hope not, but that is the next name. In the Eastern Pacific, could 98E uh, become Hilda? It's possible, but not very likely at this time. In the Central Pacific, we're still waiting on Hone, believe it or not. In the Western Pacific, after Infa and Sampaka, the next name is Napartak. We could see that soon if 90W forms. In the North, in the North Indian Ocean, the next name is Gulab. In the Australian region, the next name is Paddy in the Southwest Indian Ocean. The next name is Anna. We've had that name quite a few times in many lists. In the South Pacific, we're looking out for Cody. That's it for, the, for tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll have another one tomorrow night, either normal or live.